changes, transformations, and surprises. The List presents COVID one year later. Their growth has really changed the American culture. Technology gave many restaurants a boost, while a fast food item got the boot and a huge modification to We travel in a different way. How travel and tourism has transformed. Plus, virtual meetings gone hilariously wrong. I'm not a cat. But first, the industries that are beating the odds. That's at the top of our list right now. Hey everyone, I'm Shaguna Dulo. And I'm Christina Guerrero. It was about this time last year that the world went into full lockdown mode. It was a time of uncertainty. I mean, no one could begin to guess the long-term impact this pandemic would have on our lives. The loss of life, our economy being turned upside down, and the emotional and mental toll it's taken on our families has been devastating. It's also had a lot of effects on how we live day to day which is why we're doing a special show today called COVID One Year Later. And we're starting with some unexpected changes in the economy. Jimmy Rhodes says that amid all the hardships caused over the past year, there have been some unusual industries that have gotten big bumps in business, thanks to COVID. We're running down some pandemic booms, and that's our featured story at the top of the list. In complex systems, cause and effect can be hard to connect. Think health effects in your body or highway traffic jams that suddenly clear up with nary an accident or construction cone in sight. And for all its hardships, the pandemic has also created some unexpected business opportunities. We're running down surprising pandemic booms. First up, live stream dog training. Since the start of the pandemic, more than 3 million pets made their ways into homes all across this country. Petco's Darius Cooper says soon after all those adoptions, people realized they needed to train these beasts, but safely. The phenomena of virtual dog training is real. Our online dog training program allows pet parents to safely train from the comfort of their own home, working with one of our certified online dog trainers from our puppy basics all the way through our beyond the basics. Next, the pandemic's caused a boom in signage. Just ask signs.com's Nelson James. May through October were our biggest months we've ever had. Of course, there's all those new banners. Banners surged with the now open especially around the restaurant business. Demand also blew up for decals on doors telling you to mask up and those stickers on the floor that tell you where to stand in line. And the pandemic may have saved the QR code. People are putting those QR codes on their signage, on their windows. And what's really exploded? Yard signs. And it was due to the pandemic, but it wasn't health and safety signage. It was actually graduation signage. That's right. They were everywhere. And this next one coattails on the DIY trend, paint sales. Our 2020 color of the year was back to nature. And this is a very popular green and it grew triple digits year over year. Erica Wolfels, the VP of Color and Creative Service at Bear Paint. We've seen rises in warmer colors like a light taupe, like a color called creamy mushroom, or a wonderful light khaki called basswood, or honeyed white, which is a very light pastel yellow. So these neutral tones for that comforting, cozy feel. Hey, if you got to spend months indoors, you may as well make your house beautiful. Large projects, full rooms, all four walls, maybe an accent wall, maybe the ceiling trim painted doors on the interior and the exterior. And our final pandemic boom is in the motorized category called power sports. ATVs, side-by-sides, personal watercraft, boats, things like that. Sam Nimi owns Broward Motorsports, and you got to understand this category usually doesn't handle shocks very well. Whether it's a recession, a bad economy, a hurricane, whatever it is, our industry gets impacted first, and it recovers last. Because it's all discretionary spending. Hey, nobody needs a jet ski. But when the lockdown starts, we just started seeing it getting busier and busier and busier and it kept on going to the point where all dealerships sold out of inventory. So why? People were cooped up at home, tired of being indoors, want to do something outdoors where they weren't in a group or a setting where they might catch COVID. And the stimulus checks probably didn't hurt either. Our customer base just expanded greatly and that's to me the most important part of the whole thing. So these short-term bumps may have a long tail effect. Surprising pandemic booms are at the top of the list. Well, one of the industries that's experienced a tectonic shift over the past year, food. From delivery systems and modified menus to what we snack on. Let's take a look at how we eat in the new normal. Before the pandemic, there were a few trends in the food industry that were starting to take shape. Food delivery, retro snacks, and consolidated menus. A lot of these food trends that we see 
aren't new. They actually already existed, just most of us didn't necessarily know about it. Brand and marketing expert Ali Craig shares three ways we are eating in the new normal, starting with restaurant delivery apps. These food apps went from being very unknown to in the mainstream culture so quickly and their growth has really changed the American culture in the way we see food delivery for a lifetime. More than 11 million of us tried an app like Uber Eats or DoorDash in the last year. And despite the delivery fees, the convenience keeps us coming back for more. It's really quite lovely to just stay in your PJs, watch Netflix, or keep working from home and just have a great meal delivered to your door that you didn't even have to preheat the oven for. At number two, a boom in retro snacking. Ali says that a recent study showed 53% of us grabbed up a retro snack in 2020. Those are what are our comfort foods. They still are what we gravitate towards because it makes us feel safe and secure. And that's especially what we were looking for in 2020. And while snacking helped us gain the quarantine 15, according to the International Food Information Council, 85% of us also reach for healthy, immune-boosting foods like yogurt, citrus, and almonds. We'll wrap with slimmed down fast food menus. Many of our favorites disappeared as restaurants tried to cut costs. Can I get a Mexican pizza? We no longer serve Mexican pizza. Mexican pizza got the boot from Taco Bell, while McDonald's said so long to salads and all day breakfast. It makes smart sense for them financially in the short term, but I'm going to bet the tides are going to turn on that one. They already are. More than 160,000 people have signed a change.org petition demanding that Mexican pizza be added back to the menu. Good to see people standing up for a cause they believe in. A lot of people have been complaining. They're like third, fourth person, I think, today. From delivery apps and slimmed down menus to good and bad snacking, that's the new normal for eating in the time of COVID. Another industry the pandemic has wreaked havoc upon is travel. From journey to destination, the effects have been dramatic, but hopefully that'll change soon. So to be prepared when we head out again, we're looking at travel transformations in 2021. Since COVID hit, a lot of things in our lives have changed. One being, we travel in a different way. A lot of things are different. To learn about some of these changes, we turn to founder of Satchel Global Travel Wellness, Edita Satchel. First up, let's talk numbers with some travel stats. Before COVID, we were flying like crazy everywhere. But now, now we're thinking twice. The overall airline sales are 85% down in comparison to 2019. And this is the data provided by Airlines Reporting Corporation. Which means a lot of us were dusting off the old car way more. In 2020, over 97% of people decided to drive versus to take a flight. And that is not surprising because of all the changes that happened. Which brings us to some of those big airline changes. Let's talk about arrival and check-in, which as of now... You need to be six feet apart from anybody who is not your family member or a person you travel with. You may also notice that during check-in... There will be a plastic wall or a shield that will separate you from the employee of the airline. So do not lean on those walls. And some airlines may even ask you to... Print your own luggage tag. So so think about that and you will need to allow for more time at the airport. Next, let's check out what's different during the in-flight service. One of the things which airlines are looking and introducing is the onboard entertainment totally touchless. She says this will allow us to connect wirelessly via our smart devices to avoid contamination. Another thing that you will notice is that the flight attendant will wear a face covering mask, gloves, and also additional coverage of their regular uniform. You will not be able to lean and collect your food from the tray. It's all about protection and sanitization, which is actually amazing. Finally, whether you're driving or flying, when you get to your hotel, things may be a tad different. You may be required to self-check in. And another one is that you will not be allowed to share an elevator with people who you don't know or you don't travel with. Another big change is how often housekeeping may be making the rounds. Your room may not be cleaned every day. And she says in some hotels, you may receive a cleaning set to clean your own room. Sometimes 
we don't do it at home, but we'll have to do it in a hotel. Now we know what to expect the next time we decide to travel. Up next, a curious online pastime. Scrolling through listings and dreaming of a move. Browsing on this website is more popular than ever before. Plus, pandemic-inspired style is giving the beauty industry a new look. Definitely a conversation starter. Then, some epic video conference fails. <laughs> oh my gosh. COVID, one year later, next. Welcome back to our COVID one year later special. Well, one pastime that skyrocketed during the pandemic, scrolling on the online real estate company Zillow.com. So we are checking out the art, science, and guilty pleasure of Zillow surfing. Forget scrolling through social media. These days, people are scrolling through real estate listings. Zillow surfing is uh, scrolling through listings on Zillow and dreaming of a move. Zillow surfing has become a huge pandemic pastime, and Zillow home trends expert Amanda Pendleton is walking us through why. First, the rise of real estate tech has turned home buying sites into online window shopping. The millennials are the largest generational group in the country and they're aging into their home buying years. This is a generation that isn't afraid to buy online. Nearly 60% of millennials say that they would be at least somewhat confident putting an offer on a home that they hadn't seen in person, but where they would actually taken a virtual tour. So there's no more scrolling through grainy real estate photos. These tours and interactive floor plans allow people have an incredibly immersive experience of a home and kind of teleport themselves from room to room of a home that could be hundreds or even thousands of miles away. And some people aren't ready to make a big move, but instead are using Zillow surfing as a way of escaping reality. I mean, during this difficult time, we know that people are turning to Zillow to dream, to escape, and to think about all the possibilities a move could bring. There are entire social media accounts dedicated to listings, from the aspirational to the absurd. The facade is actually really, really pretty. It's very normal. Instead of doom scrolling through bad news, you can scroll through beautiful homes in exotic locations as you fantasize about homes for your future without worry about budget. And there are the same demographic and pandemic-led drivers that are prompting people to not only surf Zillow, but to move. That's where the final reason so many are surfing Zillow comes in. The Great Reshuffling. So the pandemic prompted what we call the Great Reshuffling, which is where as we've all spent so much time at home, we've started to look around our homes and, and wonder if they're really meeting all of our new needs in this new normal. People don't necessarily have to live right in the city anymore, so they can search through real estate apps searching for that big backyard or walk-in closet. And to think about the possibilities a move could bring. Whether you're escaping reality or looking to change your own, we're riding the Zillow surfing wave. Since the pandemic hit, video conference calls online have been essential for remote learning, working from home, and staying connected with family and friends. It was new for many of us, so it's not surprising there were some bumps along the way. Teresa Strasser shares four entertaining fails on the buzz list. Teresa. Thank you. We cannot help but laugh at these now legendary video conferencing fails. Coming in at number one, I am not a cat. Mr. Ponton, I believe you have a filter turned on in the video settings. During a legal proceeding last month, Presidio County, Texas lawyer Rod Ponton accidentally triggered a Zoom cat filter. Can you hear me, Judge? I can hear you. I think it's a filter. It, in the it is, and I don't know how to remove it. I'm prepared to go forward with it. That's, I'm here live. That's not, I'm not a cat. He's not a cat. At number two, a woman speaking Spanish is interrupted during a Zoom call and tidy whities are involved. It was posted on Twitter last March with the caption, behind every successful woman is an unsuccessful man not wearing any pants. At number three, also last March, an awkward team meeting with staff members of Portland, Oregon radio station 98.7, The Bull. <laughs> <laughs> the meeting was over, but he didn't disconnect, so his colleagues got to see his little no pants party. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like good friends, they called him to let him know, and when he picked up, Tony, I can see you here. Guessing that mad dash was to his closet, 
And fourth on our list of video conference fails, a distance learning disconnect that happened in October. But we'll try and at least discuss. Guys, what happened? A second grade teacher lost her connection and as the bewildered students discuss what happened, some start to feel like they're in trouble. The teacher's recording this. She can watch us and see that we're not behaving. They also think the principal is watching. We'll be toast. Toast means uh, we're in trouble. Mm, not toast. Pretty soon, everybody's craving breakfast. Toast and eggs? That sounds really good with lettuce. Toast, eggs, and lettuce. Why is IHOP not offering this? Video conferencing meeting fails on the buzz list. We've got lots more to come, stay right here. We're back with our COVID one year later show. People who make movies, TV and music are known for being creative and they had to take it up a notch to keep up with the pandemic. Heidi Fogelsong's checking out COVID inspired entertainment trends on the hot list. Okay, everybody, let's take it from the top. The entertainment industry undeniably looks much different now than pre-pandemic. COVID has had a seismic impact on the entertainment world. Each area, though, has been affected a little bit differently. Christian Blauvelt, managing editor at IndieWire, takes us through some of the trends that came to the forefront during the pandemic. Hi, my name is Chris. Is this on? Our list begins with a look at the music industry. Suddenly you don't have live events, you have to rethink your model completely. And something we saw was artists doing at-home live performances on social media, which brought fans closer to their favorite artists. As promised, I am pantsless, I have a robe on. I think there's a real premium on authenticity right now, feeling like that you have a connection to an artist that you're seeing a little bit of who they are unfiltered. It feels more personal. From personal performances to nostalgic ones, let's talk about all those TV and movie reunions. When is the last time you all got together? The premiere, probably. I think nostalgia has been popular for some years in such a, an intense way, but even more so during the pandemic, because the past is something that won't change. While some reunions might have happened thanks to the extra free time, others happened in order to raise money for charity. Regardless, they all brought some nostalgic comfort to fans. I've been practicing social distancing since I was four years old. It makes them just feel good, like, okay, there is something I can still hold on to from the past that will allow me to go forward and face this really uncertain present. Our list wraps up in the world of film. We all have our secrets. The industry that had been was suddenly changed completely overnight. With theaters shut down, some movie studios delayed their theatrical releases, while others dropped them directly on streaming or video on demand. So the big thing here is that people are becoming more and more accustomed to watching movies at home. So will the movie theater experience ever be the same? I think there will be kind of a consolidation when it comes to movie theaters, that everyone will just go to certain really big titles, and then everything else they can pick and choose at their will to watch at home. Look at the stars, look how they shine for you. A brief look into the pandemic-driven trends we saw in entertainment. What's next? The future. On the hot list. We'll be right back. We're back with our COVID One Year Later show. Many trends we're seeing in the world of cosmetics are a direct result of the pandemic. From being more budget conscious to DIYing things we learn on social media. Teresa Strasser looks at how COVID has made over our beauty trends. The pandemic changed so much this past year, including our glam and beauty routines. Every time there's something culturally that happens in the world, there is a huge beauty trend that follows. We spoke with celebrity makeup artist Ashley Glazer to learn about pandemic-inspired beauty trends. Starting with feathered brows. The feathered brow is a beautiful brushed up brow. This is really like letting you show how much brow growth you've had over the last year. And it just gives us this beautiful open eye look. You can do this trend with a brow brush, glycerin soap, hairspray, or brow gel. And we are brushing our brows all the way up and sort of laying them down flat with our masks when we're out and about in public, the eyes are the only thing that we're seeing. So to have this really cool, full, beautiful brow is definitely a conversation starter and a really great way to look polished and groomed. Next, 
When hair salons closed, TikTok introduced us to Sock Curls. It's a heatless way to get really bouncy, fresh curls. It's really easy. Anybody can do it. You'll need a couple of socks and dry or damp hair. Clip a sock on the top of your head. You wrap your hair around the leg of the sock, and then you fold it back up and tuck it in and sleep on it. Our final pandemic beauty trend, skin minimalism, which is a really flawless complexion that only focuses on the natural texture of your skin. If you have a blemish, you only really want to cover that blemish, not full coverage foundation caked on all over the place. Masks are playing a big part in this trend. Breakouts from the mask has definitely been a huge problem. The makeup gets off all over the mask no matter what tricks you're trying. So I think just naturally, we've all started to pare down our beauty routine, starting to work maybe only from the nose up, focusing on the eyes. We're exploring beauty trends influenced by the pandemic. And friends, that wraps up our special show, COVID, one year later. Shagoon, what a year it's been. And while it was tough, you know, I really enjoyed the time I had with my babies. Oh. I mean, most of the time. <laughs> How about you? Well, Christina, the year just reaffirmed what I've always known, that my wife is amazing yeah. and I'm a very fortunate man. Yeah, gratitude for sure. <laughs> Thanks for watching The List. We'll see you next time.